Hey there, Clue Crew. Ariana of Clomeister Sisters here, bringing you my top five most unexpected villains. Okay, so her isn't exactly known for shocking us with Nancy Drew bad guys. They like to leave clues so you can figure it out. Of course, then there are the ones that they really just softball in. I'm looking at you guys. If this were the most obvious villains, you five would make the list, but it's not, so go away. Number five, Lewis Chandler from Message in a Haunted Mansion. Okay, so yes, Lewis is fairly shifty, but so is everyone else in this game. Rose, while hiring us, gets a little secretive and standoffish and will fire us for even the slightest offense. If she actually wanted results, she wouldn't be so apt to get rid of her detective. Charlie has the whole hidden past thing going for him. Then there's our psychic red herring. Get it? Red herring? <laughs> Shut up, I'm funny. Yeah, he's obviously digging into the history of the building to get the treasure, but he could just as easily be genuinely interested. As we learned, the mansion has a crazy history. Who wouldn't want to learn about this place? Because I can see him being just an enthusiast, Lewis makes number five on my list. Coming in at number four, we have Rentaro Aihara, Shadow at the Water's Edge. More than anything, for reason to me at least, Rentaro's deception was just plain heartbreaking. Couldn't her have just let him be a sweet little weirdo with a penchant for robots? We spend the whole game really feeling for Rentaro's awkwardness and social ineptitude, but then we find out he's been messing things up all along just to get Miwako to leave with him. What a creep! Yet, whenever I play Shadow at the Water's Edge, which I do that like a lot. I find myself falling for his act over and over again. Number three, Joseph Hughes from Final Scene. Similarly to Rentaro, we, as Nancy, find ourselves unfortunately endeared to this quirky old man. He's full of folksy sayings and just generally loves the Royal Palladium. In fact, his love and knowledge of the theater probably should have been the biggest clue that Joseph was our big bad. Who else could have orchestrated such disappearing acts? Who else knew the theater so well? Who else had access and the know-how to pull this off? But the worst thing is Joseph really thinks he's doing what's best for the theater. He even makes sure to take care of Maya as best as he can. He's just an old man rapidly approaching senility who is having his one constant home taken away from him. Still, rules are rules and he breaks a lot of them by kidnapping Nancy's friend. Unexpected villain number two? Fiona Malloy from Haunting of Castle Malloy. The number two slot goes to the heartbreaking and unexpected Fiona Malloy. Her crime? Kidnapping the groom and then just generally running around to creep people out. Her motive? An unbelievably sad backstory involving a deadly explosion killing her family and destroying Castle Malloy. We learn the sad tale about the little girl who died decades ago and we find her dolls and creepy signs in her dilapidated bedroom. But there's very little warning when we suddenly discover not only is she alive, but she's our kidnapping rocket-powered banshee. So then we are left dumbfounded and depressed at the idea of a little girl taking care of herself in the little cabin in the bog. She gets a happier ending than most villains, but even that's bittersweet since she could have been happy this whole time if someone had just found her. And that brings us to my number one choice for most unexpected villain. Drum roll, please. Remember me, Nancy? Oh my gosh, you're that guy from New York, the one who threatened the life of Rick Arlen. You're the agent, David, no, Daniel, Darren, Darwin, Derek, Dewey, Dick, Drake. Dwayne, you idiot, Dwayne Powers. Wayne freaking powers Ransom of the Seven Ships. Even Nancy looked at our villain and said, Oh, right, you're, um, that one guy? The baffling ending to this strange game brings back our villain from game number two of the entire series, Stay Tuned for Danger. Or, as Reese and I like to say it, Stay Tuned for Danger! Yeah, no, we uh, we say it that way every single time. It's it's kind of compulsive at this point. Of course, we obviously know that it's that one other person on the island, despite his claims that there are other people. But there was no way to figure out that it was Dwayne. Don't get me wrong. 
It was a pretty nifty throwback, you know, when we actually remembered who the heck Dwayne Powers even was. And you have to imagine there are a bunch of villains who would love to do exactly what Dwayne did. The fact that there was a bad guy so full of anger and plotting revenge against Nancy isn't the weird part. It's that A, there are zero clues that it's Dwayne, and B, he is probably one of the least memorable villains. You could probably have thrown in any other bad guy and had them accidentally drop little hints who they were, and I would have been just as happy. Yes, it was all sheer genius. I was an up-and-coming actor before you came along, did you know that? No, I didn't. Well, I was. And as I just proved, I've still got what it takes. You fell for my performance hook, line, and sinker. Dwayne's arrogance and pride are pretty much his only character traits in Stay Tuned for Danger, so good for him for fooling us. But you won't fool us a second time, Dwayne. We're going to be waiting for you. So that's it for this video. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with any of my picks, where I might have gotten anything wrong, or who you would have picked for this list instead. Like and subscribe if you want more videos like this, and don't forget to check our Cruelmeister Sisters podcast. For more Clue Crew content, go to our blog at cruelmeistersisters.tumblr.com. Once again, I'm Ariana, and I'll catch you later, super sleuths.